How's it going everybody and welcome back. We currently have pretty much all of our assets done. The flag will be for the next episode when we go into doing a actual game loop. But for now let's go back to the player and we are going to do player animation. So right now we just have our cube here. So if we press play we can move around and we can climb up the ladder and all that kind of fun stuff. If you're using something like Mixamo to get your animations, just export it as an FBX and then import it into your game. For my project, I made my own rig and my own animations, so I'm going to be using those. So we're going to open up a new blend file. I had this one prepared earlier so that you didn't have to watch me go through the entire process of fixing textures from FBX files. But you can see that I have my character and this will be my little dude. <laughs> I made some animations to start with. So I got my idle animation. I got a hurt animation. Got myself a climb animation. And then the falling animation. So I am missing a couple of animations. For some reason, uh, Blender decided that I didn't need them anymore. But I do have them in another file. So I'm just going to append these animations by going into here. You can see that this is my, my other file. So I just go into the actions folder. And I want the jog. I want the drown, death animation, respawn animation, and I think that's about it. So we'll just append those animations. So if I come in here, you can see that I now have these. So I can click on jog, and you can see my jog animation. So now that we have these animations, I'm going to save my file, and I'm going to open up level 1 again. So in level 1, make sure that the player collection is selected, select the player, Put the cursor there and we're going to go file append and we're going to click on our cartoon character bl dot blend file and we just want to go over to the object folder grab all these objects and we're just going to append them so we can set our little animated guy over at our player location and then it's just a matter of putting him inside the hitbox and we're going to select the rig rotate 180 degrees like so get everything back lined up again so everything's nice and lined up. We can click on the player and go over to the object property settings, go to viewport and display, and then just change it to wired. So when we press play, you'll see that the player is now invisible. So we also want to make sure that our rig is on no collision. So just click on the player. You can see that it is currently on static. And what I want to do is just go into the hierarchy, make this easy on ourselves, click on the armature and then select hierarchy. The rig is obviously on no collision, so we can just press F3 copy and copy physics properties. Now our player object won't interact with our visual character. This hitbox is a little bit too large for our character so I'm just going to press tab and just make it so it fits just inside the just about as wide as the head. So like that. So we're going to click on the armature and then shift and click on the the player object control P and then object keep transform. There we go. So if we go into our camera view and we press play, we can now move around. Now let's go over to the logic brick section. We're going to be using logic bricks for the animation controllers because you'll get a lot better performance out of this. So what we're going to use is properties to trigger our actions. For example, we're going to do a property and we're going to put an action down. So connect the property in the action and we're going to go over to the game property section and add a new property. This is going to be called is walking and we're going to make this a boolean so if is walking is equal to true and currently when it is not ticked it is equal to false but when this is equal to true so we'll go over to our property setting is walking type in true so if is walking is equal to true then we want our walk animation or not walk i have it called jog animation click that it is 40 frames long and our property is, or we're going to set it at frame 1, so 1 to 40. We're going to do a priority of 20. Idle will be 21. So a blend of 6. So currently it's on play. We want this to be on loop stop. So when we want this to loop, and then if something else happens, we want it to stop. Also, we want the frame tick icon to be on so that it happens every frame. If we turn is walking to true and we press play, you can see that we have a walking animation. So we need a way to trigger this animation. So this is where the logic nodes are going to come in handy. And we want to go over to our player movement script. So currently we have this little node tree here. And this is controlling our player movement. So we need to trigger the walk animation whenever we have the keys pressed down. 
but we only want it to happen when we have the specific keys pressed down. So WASD or whatever your movement keys are. So to make this happen, what we're gonna do is just duplicate these key down nodes, bring them over here, and I'm just going to remove this from frame. Then we're gonna add in a OR controller, and it's going to be OR list, because we want multiple ORs. So if D is pressed, if A is pressed, if W is pressed, or if S is pressed, we want to set property and connect the OR into the condition. And we want the we want to set the property of our rig here, which is going to be armature 001 and is walking. So we want is walking, which is going to be a bool, to be true. We also want to do the opposite of this. So we're going to add in a not. So if the condition of these keys being pressed down is not true, so if we are just idling, then we want to set property like so and connect the knot into the set property. Select the armature again. So we'll do armature 001. Property of is walking, set, the, set it to boolean and leave it on false this time. So now we have it set to true or false. So if we go into our camera and we press play, you can see that our character is currently doing nothing, but if we press the key down, we now have a walk animation. So let's set up the idle animation, which is going to be pretty easy. Just go over to Logic Bricks and add in a new action. Then to, then add a controller, we're going to add a NAND and say if is walking is not true, connect that into the NAND, then connect the NAND into the action. We want this to be loop stop again. We're going to select our idle animation and we want to set this to 120 frames. My, my idle animation is 120 frames long. Start frame of 1, blend of 6, and a priority of 21. The idle animation does have to be higher than the walk animation. So, that looks like it'll be all good. So if we press play, we'll see nothing happens. But when we stop walking, our idle animation starts to play. And this will be a little bit easier if I just select this here. So, when we're not walking, our idle animation place. My character is a little bit far in the ground here. Well, let's make it so if we are falling, so if we are not touching the ground, that a falling animation will play. This will also play if we are jumping. So we'll just go add a new property. This is going to be called falling. Make this a boolean and leave it on false. So if property is falling is equal to true, so make this on each frame, we'll add a action, like that, and we'll do this as loop stop, falling. So I'm actually going to use my jump animation for this, and it's just going to be frame one to frame one with a blend of six and a priority of 19. So let's go over to our logic nodes, and we need to just make it so if we're not colliding with the ground, then we are falling. So the easiest way to do this is to just come over here. We're going to add in a collision, like so. And we want to add a set property. Connect this together, so when colliding, then the property of armature 001 falling is a boolean, and make it true. So if collision, it will equal to true. Select self, because our player movement script is still selected to the player. So self, we want this to be each frame and we're going to use material and we're going to select our material that is applied to everything which is our non metallic material there we go so we want this to actually be false and then we'll duplicate this add in a knot again just put that right under there so if we are not colliding with the ground then is falling is equal to true so if we press play and we can see we can walk around and then if I jump, we go into our jump animation. So let's go over to Logic Bricks. And in fact, our idle animation, I think it's just going to be better if we bring it all the way to the top. And we're just going to add an always. And then connect that together. Bring this always all the way to the top. Set that on every frame. So if we press play, we just go directly into our idle animation. And our all of our animations will default to that idle animation. So now we have a jump and we can walk around.
To finish off this tutorial, I want the character to, when we fall in the water, do a drown animation before respawning. Let's just go and add a new property, and we're going to call this drown. Then we're going to make this a boolean, and we are going to add a property, drown, if true, make this every frame, then we'll add our action. So we're going to just do play, and then the action we want to play is drown, which is 140 frames long, blend of 6. So we can see if I press play, or if I turn drown to true, and I press play, then we have our little drown animation. So I want this drown animation to play when we get in the water, so let's go to the logic nodes again. So now we're going to go over to the player health script where we have our respawn mechanic. And currently we have collision with drown, then we are going to minus 1 HP and set our position. But we don't want the position to set immediately, we want the animation to play, and then after the animation is done, we will have the player respawn. So let's add in a timer, hook that up there. Our animation is 140 frames long. So that's going to be just over two seconds. So let's just set it to two seconds for now and we'll see if that timing works out. So currently if we press play and then we walk over to the water and jump in, it will hold for a second and then the character will respawn. So now we need to set property, set, and we'll just drop it in this frame. We're going to move this down a little bit, clean everything up. And then what we want to do is when collision before the timer, we want to set the property of our armature of drown to true. So boolean and true. But then let's duplicate this, move it up. After the timer, we're just going to say when elapsed, then set this to false. So when we collide with the property drown, we will set our drown to true, which will play the animation. And then when the animation is finished, or after the timer is finished, it'll set it to false and the animation will stop. So if we press play and we walk over to the water and jump in, our little drown animation will play, the character will go down and then respawn. So let's go to the logic bricks and where it says action, let's set this to loop stop. So that way when we play, it will automatically stop whenever our timer is finished. Just enough time for the character to go underwater, goes down and then respawns. So loop stop is generally your best way to go because that way you can start and stop the animation at any time. So it looks like two seconds on loop stop is perfect. So now we do our little drown animation and then our character respawns. But that is how you do animations and setting up animations. There's many ways to do it. I also have a little bit of an older video, but it is still within the same version for how to do animation blending. I would highly recommend you check out that video. This is just a beginner's guide on how to set up animations. So if you like this video, leave a like. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.